Hello everyone, welcome to Forensic Express and today we will be discussing about the various skull bones and the types of skull fractures. So guys, in skull there are different bones like we are having frontal bone, we are having parietal bone, we are having occipital bone and we are having temporal and sphenoid and all. So, uh, the average thickness, average thickness of skull bone is uh, 6 mm, approximately 6 mm is the thickness of skull bone. Now the thickest bone, thickest bone of skull is the occipital bone and which is having thickness uh, uh, approximately 15 mm and the thinnest bone is the temporal bone. This bone is the thinnest bone which is having thickness of uh, 4 mm. Now, the thickness of frontal as well as the parietal bones uh, is uh, between 7 to 8 mm. So, the thickness of skull bones is uh, variable. So, basically what happens that uh, the skull is having two tables, two tables, one is outer table and then one is inner table. So, this is pericranium, this is pericranium and this layer is the endocranium and underlying uh, is the brain. Now this outer table and inner table uh, is to us the uh, both the side of a spongy bone that is a uh, that is known as diploid. So outer table outer table is uh, the uh, twice thicker as compared to inner table inner table. So outer table is thicker as compared to inner table. Now as a rule as a rule for the all uh, skull or the brain injuries the relationship there is no relationship no relationship between the uh, brain injury brain injury and skull fractures skull fractures or skull injuries there may be multiple skull fractures single or multiple skull fractures but no underlying brain injury at all or vice versa so there is no relation at all so this is the rule now uh, before proceeding there are some uh, some causes of skull fractures so there may be some uh, sort of local deformation or general deformation so suppose uh, this is the outer table this is the outer table and this is the inner table and the force is applied in case of local deformation force is applied at this point uh, A. Now what happens that the inner table is turning, the outer table is turning towards inside and inner table is also turning towards inside. So this is the site of uh, force A and these are the two sites B and B dash. So so these uh, what happens at the, at the site of local uh, deformation, the inner table is fractured at the uh, site of local deformation at the site of impact the inner table because of the force is uh, applied and due to traction force what happens due to traction force uh, at the both the B and B dash sites these are the sites or at outer table so they are fractured so outer table is fractured at the margins of the force but the inner table is fractured at the site of force so this is the phenomenon which is seen in case of local deformation now something is known as general deformation so suppose this is uh, skull and there may be an uh, bilaterally uh, uh, general deformation there may be some upside down general deformation of skull so these two mechanisms one is local deformation and second is general deformation are uh, the basic cause for the now skull the types fractures. of uh, skull fractures so first is the comminuted fracture so first type of fracture that is uh, the comminuted fracture so we are covering types of skull fracture first is comminuted fracture so how do you define comminuted fracture if two or more fracture lines if two or more fracture lines are dividing uh, the skull bone into three or more fragments so there are multiple fragments of skull bones uh, in in case of comminuted fractures basically these fractures sometimes resembles like spider web spider web or mosaic pattern mosaic pattern these are comminuted fractures so most of the comminuted fractures are as a result of general deformation general deformation 
So, this is the mechanism of a skull fracture. Now, what happens if the fracture fragments like this fragment, if the fracture fragments in case of comminuted fractures are depressed, are depressed, then this fracture is known as depressed comminuted fracture, depressed comminuted fracture depressed comminuted fracture if the fracture fragment is depressed then this is known as depressed comminuted fracture so this is the first type of skull fracture that is the comminuted fracture now there is another type of skull fracture that is depressed fracture the second one is depressed fracture depressed so what do you mean by depressed fracture if bone is driven inwards the bone is driven inwards like this the bone is driven inwards so outer table outer table is basically the uh, this is outer table this is inner table and there is deploy so outer table is driven uh, inwards so this is uh, the the uh, skull bone is depressed so most of the uh, depressed fractures are as a result of local deformation as a result of local deformations so now uh, the depressed fractures these fractures are also known as signature fractures signature fractures why because because sometimes the shape of fractures the shape of fractures uh, mirrors the striking surface of the weapon the suppose uh, this is the striking surface uh, of any weapon so the shape of uh, the injury the shape of the injury resembles with the uh, the striking surface of the weapon so that we can trace the alleged weapon of offense so that's why these are also known as signature fractures these are very significant in various uh, crimes uh, for tracing the alleged weapon of offense now the third type of skull fracture is the diastatic fracture the third type of skull fracture is diastatic fracture so what do you mean by sutural diathesis uh, diastatic uh, is the sutural fracture is the other name for sutural diastatic fracture now what happens in case of diastatic fracture there is separation of cranial bones at suture lines suppose uh, the, uh, these are the suture lines this is uh, the sagittal suture this is the coronal suture so these are the suture lines which are opened up so separation of cranial bones so yeah, it is basically a separation of cranial bones uh, at uh, a suture line so basically these these fractures are seen in young population seen in young population so these are the diastatic fractures now most common the suture that is involved in case of diastatic fractures are the uh, the the sagittal suture is commonly involved the sagittal suture is commonly involved in case of sutural diathesis so now the fourth one is the fissured fracture fissured fracture so this is the fissured fracture so what do you mean by fissured fracture or otherwise known as linear fracture linear so this fracture fissured fracture or linear fracture is the commonest type of skull fracture this is commonest type of skull fracture so now uh, what happens if head is sandwiched suppose this is head and it is sandwiched between a one hard surface and the uh, the weapon weapon then what happens uh, uh, there is a pressure compression of the skull bone so that leads to fissure fracture or the linear fracture it is commonest type of skull fracture that is commonly seen uh, in skull so this is the fissure fracture or linear fracture as shown in the picture so this is another type of skull fracture now uh, the next is the gutter fracture next is the gutter fracture gutter fracture so what happens in gutter fractures uh, there is long narrow it is long narrow fracture so, uh, like uh, shown in the picture uh, this type of fracture is known as gutter fractures this is basically what happens uh, in in gutter fractures this this outer table is removed uh, outer table is removed or sometimes they deploy or the inner table and there may be some uh, sort of perforating injuries in, uh, in extreme cases so in, in case of gutter fractures 
Well, you know, these type of fractures are mostly seen in glancing bullet injury, glancing bullet injuries. So these are gutter fractures. Now what happens? We can grade the gutter fractures if only outer table, if only outer table is involved, then these are known as uh, the first degree uh, uh, gutter fractures. But if the inner table, inner table dura meter and the brain um, is also involved, inner table dura or brain is involved, so this is known as second degree gutter fractures. But if uh, the uh, like shown in the picture, this is the entry wound, this is the exit wound and they both are communicating with each other. So this is third degree uh, of gutter fractures like shown in the picture. So if exit or entry wound are uh, communicating with e e each other, so this uh, kind of injury, this kind of injury uh, uh, that appears like a keyhole, keyhole. So this kind of injury is known as keyhole injury that is grade 3. Now there may be some extreme grade uh, or perforating injury, perforating injuries. So this is the gutter fracture that is another type of skull fracture. Now the next skull fracture is the pond fracture, uh, pond fracture, next is the pond fracture. So what do you mean by pond fracture? It is what happens basically, it, it is and the pond fracture is the simple dent, simple uh, dent. Uh, it is basically the simple dent like a ping pong like we, uh, we all have seen the ping pong ball ping pong ball like a tennis ball ping pong ball so it is a simple dent of a ten uh, like a tennis ball or the ping pong ball Be because in in kids or infants the skull is a uh, very malleable so that's why there is uh, these uh, dents are very common uh, in infants so these uh, types of fractures are known as pond fractures now the next type of fracture is the ring fracture, ring fracture. What happens in case of ring fracture? The uh, ring fracture is otherwise also known as foramina fracture, foramina fracture. It is basically um, the circular fracture around the foramina. This is foramen magnum and this is the circular fracture all around the foramen uh, magnum. So that's why it is also known as uh, foramina fracture. Now it can be seen in various cases of fall from height, fall from, fall from height, fall from height cases. Either uh, fall maybe uh, onto feet, feet and uh, landing, or maybe on the buttocks. So can be seen in case of fall on the feet or the buttocks. So this is known as ring or the foramina fracture, base fractures. So most commonly the basal fracture or the base of skull fractures are uh, run across the pituitary fossa. So this is the pituitary fossa and most of the fractures uh, run across the pituitary fossa. This is the anterior cranial fossa and this is middle cranial fossa and this is posterior cranial fossa and this is the foramen magnum and these are the pituitary part of temporal bones. So most of these fractures uh, cross uh, the uh, pituitary fossa. Now there are various types of skull, uh, the base of skull fracture, uh, first is the incomplete fracture, incomplete. If fracture line is not crossing uh, to other side, this is incomplete fracture. Now if fracture line is crossing across and this is uh, complete fractures, so we can divide these complete fractures in uh, different uh, types like type 1 fracture, type 2 fracture and type 3 fracture. So first one, first one, this one, this one is uh, uh, type 1 fracture. Now the second one, this one is the type 2 fracture, this one is the type 2 fracture and this one is the type 3 fracture. So if uh, the fracture line is uh, crossing from one petrous part of temporal bone to other petrous part of temporal bone, this one. So there may be some connection between one ear to another ear. So if uh, some, some obsolete water test was uh, done in previous years, that water will enter from one ear to another ear that will show that uh, the fracture line is uh, crossing the petrous part of temporal bone. So this is type 1. This fracture, this fracture is also known as, this fracture is also known as motorcyclist fracture, motorcyclist fracture, motorcyclist fracture. Now the fracture, uh, second type of uh, the 
complete uh, basal fracture is if fracture line is crossing from one side to another through the uh, the in the pituitary fossa so this is type 2 but if the fracture line is uh, crossing like this in the anterior transverse uh, type that is type 3 so we are having posterior transverse this is type 1 then lateral frontal diagonal type of fracture that is type 2 now the anterior transverse type of fracture is also known as type 3 type of fracture so these are the fractures of base of skull so